to worship. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ready? Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Happy Thursday. Yeah. And it's been an amazing week. Phenomenal. I am excited. Look at you in the building on a Thursday. On a Thursday. I'm on in the wheel. I'm in the building with you on a Thursday. Well, I'm looking at the prank scene. There's some big surprises. Really? I didn't see the people. Well, That's we're good. just glad. Those of you that are on, on any form of social share. media, can you begin to share? Share, 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 Amen. share. Amen. There share. is a word from the Lord. Yep. For the members that are in the building, you um, RSVP'd online. Yep. So we're setting it up now that you can RSVP to get in the building because we only have a certain amount. It's a certain amount. Every 20, 24 hours before any worship experience, it'll go live. Certain amount. You get it, get in, fill it in, and you in here. Look at that. Just so like when that. you're in the building, I need you to like, act like it's my turn. I need you to be excited about today. And it's a rarity in the now. So come on, stand to your feet if you're in the building. Pastor Jamon is going to open us up in prayer. Father we trust you and we bless you and thank you for this Hallelujah. moment in time you have designed so much going on in our and world and time Jesus. we pray father in jesus name that you will let this moment be used to speak life to a person that's listening that's watching let it be a, a moment of hope a moment of empowerment a moment of transformation a moment of change and a moment of forward god we give you honor we give you praise anoint pastor hannah tonight use him Please, to Lord. minister to your people all over the place all over the world god but for this moment and now we give you worship we give you honor and we give you praise in jesus name amen wherever you are get ready to worship in your living rooms driving down the street in the building wherever you are whatever you're doing god deserves the glory and the honor and the praise give them a place to settle you hear what i'm saying let's go worship team here let's we go. go let's take it up so we give you our hearts to settle lord god we glorify you and we magnify you wherever you are would you just begin to lift up a sound to the lord bless you jesus we glorify your name higher we give you all the glory higher we ask you to settle here bless you lord Ask for your presence. Come on, let's ask him to purify. Let's say. Yeah. Come on, sing. Purify our hearts. Purify our hearts, Lord. Yes. Sing, sanctify. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sing, sanctify our sanctify our hearts. Come on, let's ask him again. Sing, purify our purify our hearts, Lord. Yeah. Sing, purify our purify our hearts, Lord. Yeah. Sing, sanctify our sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sing, sanctify our, sanctify our hearts, Lord. Let's tell them we need them. Oh, Lord, we need you. Oh, Lord, we need you. Need yeah. you. Yep. So we need to see you. We need to see you. Yeah. And we're desperate for we're you. We're desperate for you. Come on, let's ask for the glory. Now say Yes. 
Trust God to be God and release some praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
We're honored tonight. You can be seated, those in the building. For those that are watching online, there really is a word from the Lord, and I really want you to get it tonight. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of announcements. I'm going to give you a couple of announcements, but I need to I really want you to get what I really heard the Lord speak loud and clear to me for me to share on tonight, because there's some lessons that we must learn. Everyone hear me clearly, that if you don't learn the lesson, you'll have to repeat the class. I'm going to say that again. If you don't learn the lesson, then you're going to have to repeat. And some of us, we are too old to keep making the same mistake. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I can't repeat. <laughs> uh, I can't keep bumping my head up against the same brick wall. I can't keep falling to the same test. I can't keep giving in to the thing that keep chasing me. Some things have to be slain. What did he tell the children of Israel when they finally crossed the Red Sea? He said, turn around and get a good look at your enemy. Because this is your last time that you're going to see them like this. I don't know about you, but I need some things to be closed. But they're not going to close until I pass the test. Um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go back to where we went in 1 Kings 17. Let me give you a couple of announcements. Um, if you have a teenager in your home, to your teens, and we're doing our best to keep up with our teens um, through virtual, and they're going to have um, an identity team back to school kickback. It's going to be tomorrow at 5 o'clock. All you have to do is go to our website and you can register your team. Life groups, hear me clearly. Life groups is so important right now because it, it, it connects you with a village. Um, we taught you that the word says, and this is not just for Mary, it is not good for man to be alone. And so therefore, especially my singles, my widow, you need to connect to a life group, to a village. Um, that we're building that community, engaging others in small virtual groups. You can register for that by just texting life groups to 313131. That's real simple. Just text those two words, life and then the word groups to 313131. Um, or you can go to newlifesoutheast.org backslash life group and you just register and we're going to connect you with a group of people. It's not to keep you online all day. Ain't nobody trying to talk that long. But we got to make sure that you connected to somebody. Anyone that right now feel like you're alone, that you're by yourself, I am begging you to get connected. I promise you it will be a blessing to you. Um, if you don't get our text, and people are always inboxing me. Um, how do I get connected to the text? If you're watching us right now, can I get you to put this on the screen? All you have to do is to text the words NLCSE to 91694. Again, if you don't get the regular text, when do you get a text? Every Wednesday, I send out a text of some form of inspiration. Then when there's a special announcement, we send that out. Again, I repeat, all you have to do is just text the words um, NLCSE to 91694. Um, I want to thank God. Um, this weekend, this past weekend was amazing for me. Um, I woke up Sunday morning and one of the gentlemen called me and said, Pastor Hannah, have you ran outside? I said, no. He said, someone vandalized your front yard. I jumped up, ran outside all in pajamas. And my family and my friends had decorated at my front lawn decorated just saying uh, we miss you and Anna um, so much and that was I was like wow and then they did they rode through my community and just wait and so I thought that was it and then on Sunday I get here and um, they sent emails out and I know that most of you all don't check emails and to God be the glory um, <laughs> I was out there for over an hour in that sun with a DJ and I was overwhelmed seeing everyone I mean, I fist bump. I tried to respect social distancing. Some of them I jumped in their cars with my mask on. Um, but it was overwhelming. Um, it messed me up. I just went home and I sat and I thank God. They gave me cards. They gave me Starbucks cards. 
Thank you, Jesus. So much that I won't have to pay for a cup of coffee all year. I love you all so much. But just the love, just the love, the handwritten notes, those that decorated their cards. And then someone said, well, why didn't you invite the whole church? We will still be out there. We will still be out there right now. But those that did come and those that had a desire to come, I thank you. Um, if I could ever express how much I love you, how much I miss you, and how much I need you, I could never express it enough. All right? So let's get in this Bible. Let's get in this Bible. Um, I'm grateful for Pastor Jamon, and I'm grateful to even be going through this season with him um, for the, the labor that he does. For those that watch um, the, um, the one the pastors and leaders conference, one of his responsibilities is um, the production, making sure getting the team together, make sure everything is right online. I do none of this anymore. And it feels good to not carry this weight. So can you pray for him and his team on a regular basis? Amen. Consider them in your prayers. It just feels good just to walk in the building and not have to check. Glory to God, nothing. Can I give God a praise for nothing? <laughs> It feels good. Yes, it does. I keep hearing that song in my head. It feels good. Listen, God, clear my mind. Hallelujah. Preach. Get in this Bible. Come on, can let, me get, let me get all of you all that can share. This is a word from the Lord. Um, tonight, I want to speak to you because on Sunday, we talked to you about you have, to li you have to move forward in order to live. You have to move forward in order to live. You cannot stop evolving. You cannot get stuck. Everyone hear me. It is easy to get stuck. A person that refused to be stuck is Jonah. Please pay attention. The Bible says even after the whale had swallowed him up, how did he get out? He could have sat there and settled that he messed up, that he made a mistake. And some people that are listening right now, you feel like you're stuck because of a decision that you made. But thank God that he is God and he is not man. The Bible says, this is a scripture that I love. He says, out of the belly of hell cried I unto the Lord. And as a result of me crying unto the Lord, I got out of a un I got out of a stuck situation. He freed me. How did he free me? No one came to get me out. This is what he says. He says, out of the belly of hell, I cried out. So many of us are sitting up waiting on somebody to usher us out. But what if I told you your deliverance was in your own vocal cords? Come on here. Let's go. The Bible lets us know about the prophet Elijah. We talked to you on Sunday. And when we spoke to you on Sunday, we literally walked you through the fact that he knocked on Ahab's door and said, except at my word, there will be no rain nor dew. What do we teach you then? The power of your words. You got to be careful that you don't have a spirit of complaining, that you complain and don't even know you're complaining. You got to be careful that you don't have a spirit of negativity, that you're talking negative and don't even realize that you're talking negative. How can you pinpoint it? Please pay attention. For many of you all that grew up in a negative environment, it is what you are used to hearing and what you are used to speaking. So you have to pray that the Holy Ghost would allow you to hear before you speak so that you don't speak your own damnation. Can you speak your own damnation? This is good. Pay attention. The Bible says that God told Moses, go back and tell the children of Israel what? I am going to give you, but listen to me, exactly what I heard you say. Which, in other words, what you speak is going to be your reality. Come on here. What you speak is going to be your reality. If I were you, I would go ahead and prophesy my, um, my September, my October, my November, and my December. I would decree and declare my last four I going to be better. Come on here. You should type that on the screen. You should say that if you're in the building. My last four are going to be better. Somebody has already confessed that 2020 is the worst. I would, I would even give the devil that much room. I would say, listen, regardless of what has happened, I'm going to press forward and I'll speak that my last four. Come on here. Put that on the screen. My last four, my September, my October, my November, and my December is going to be better than my January, my February, my March, my April, my June, my July. Come on here. Watch me. And he speaks it. And he, speaks. he said, there will be no rain or dew except at my word. And when he spoke it, watch how powerful he is. 
heaven shut up because one man spoke because God told him to speak. When he spoke, it didn't rain. We showed you how God then led him to the brook, and we talked to you about the glass was full. We said to you on Sunday that when he was at the brook, the glass was full, which means that God has taken care of him in the midst, pay attention, of a drought. In the midst of a famine, watch me, everybody else is thirsty, but you're not everybody else. Everybody else has a need, but you are not like everybody else. Those of you that have seen God take care of you beyond your imagination more than you could ever ask or any, even think. Some of y'all have been confessing, I'm living in my overflow. You are literally walking in that season right now of your life. Come on here. Those of you that know that glass, that God fills you up, that he takes care of everything. He even took care of light bill, gas bill, rent, condo. Some of y'all even bought a car during the pandemic. Some of y'all have moved. You even got a promotion. Who gets a job while millions are being laid off. Those that are favored and called by God. Those of you that know that God has been your provider. Can I get you to confess this? Come on here. Open your mouth and type on the screen. My glass is full. Come on. I need those words to come out of your mouth. Thank you. My glass is full. Come on here. Even when I'm empty, I'm full. Come on here, let's talk Bible. Even when it looks like I am empty. We showed you then the brook dried up and then he had to move forward. When God empties your glass, pay attention, it is not to kill you. It is not for you to die. Please pay attention. We showed you on Sunday three things that you have to do in order to get out of an empty situation. Write these down if you weren't paying attention on Sunday. Number one, you're going to have to listen. What does that mean? In other words, what are my instructions? Pay attention now. Watch me. The same God that gave you a word that got you to the brook is going to give you your next word. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. It's carefully, this is the wrong time to be depending upon your, peri on, on your, on your, your, your horoscope. This is the wrong time to go see a psychic. This is the wrong time to entertain a witch. This is the wrong time to be leaning into everybody's opinion. If you've ever needed to hear from God, you need to hear right now. Can I get you to, if you're in the building, say it. If you're on the screen, say, speak, Lord, speak. Speak, speak, speak. I pray that God will speak and order your steps. After you speak, after he, after you listen, come on here, then I'm going to need you to follow his instructions. What does that mean? The next L was to leave. In other words, you cannot stay at the brook because if you stay at the brook, you're going to die. So I am going to send you to your next place of destination. Can we talk for a minute? This is your next place. He tells him, leave and go to Zarephath. And the Bible says, and then he left. So first you got to listen, then you got to leave. And here's the, thir the third one. And then you have to lean not. Lean not. What is that? Anytime God has you to listen, anytime God has you to leave, any, then, this is the thing that bothers me. When he then tells you to do something, that doesn't make sense. How many of y'all that know that we serve a God that is not into common sense? Oh, that was good. Come on here. We serve a God that one plus one don't equal two. It doesn't work. God has a way um, to making sure that you walk by faith and not by sight. God has a way of making sure that you don't lean upon your own common sense. For it is, in, look what the Bible says, it's impossible for the natural mind to discern the things of the spirit. So more than likely, he gonna have you to do some stupid stuff. Is there anybody that God has had you to do some things that don't make sense? Oh my God. Is there anybody that is listening to me right now? Go ahead, go ahead. That God has told you to do some things that just don't make sense. If you could relate to a God that have you out there like that. Hmm. 
if you could relate to a God that puts you out there like that either I need you to have the emoji with your hand up or if you're in the building just wave your hand and say I'm right here I'm right here I have had the God that I've asked him to let me do something but I didn't really think that he was going to let me do it I asked him let me step out of the boat but I really didn't think he was going to have me walk on water I asked him to bless me but I really didn't think he was going to have me to give watch me the stupid thing that God would tell him to do is if number one you got to walk to Zarephath Write this down if you take notes. That is a hundred mile walk. That is a hundred mile walk. Number two, you're going to send me to a widow. A widow is considered to be the poorest. A widow is considered to be the one that doesn't have that much. A widow is considered to be the low class. So number one, why would you have me to walk this far to get to the lowest? doesn't make sense and then you're going to make me ask her to give me what she has little of hmm. this doesn't make sense come on I'm gonna talk there is somebody right now that God is asking you to do something that don't make sense watch me how do you know it's God you would have never thought to do this you would have never thought to do this and God is saying, you hear me loud and clear. Don't act like you don't know my voice now. Nah, you knew me when I told you to go to the brook. The same God that instructed you then is speaking loud and clear right now. Some of us, when God tell you, give. Some of us, when God say, praise me. Some of God say, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Don't make a move. Don't do nothing stupid. Shut your mouth. But I can tell them something. I don't want you to say nothing. Give this away. Walk away from this. Don't say nothing. Let them fire you. I got you. How many of y'all have seen God take the stupid stuff but your miracle is wrapped up in stupid <laughs> God I feel the anointing right there you understand that watch me the weapons of our warfare are not carnal that we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh and that God is up to something supernatural allow me to those to give you all that trust God and believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think even in the stupid stuff I I need you to give God what I call a crazy praise. I need you to open your mouth right now and release a praise like you know that God is wrapped up in the stuff that don't make sense. On the count of three, release your praise. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. Stay down. Lean not until your own understanding and go for broke and go for broke and go for broke. I have, I have been in situations that God has told me to do something that just did not make sense. You gotta hear me. As a matter of fact, watch me. Let's go Bible. His ways are not our ways. Can we talk? His thoughts are not our thoughts. So he's not coming down to make you feel good. As a matter of fact, the deep calleth unto the deep. He gonna call you into some deep areas and you can't swim. Woo! we out here now this don't make sense all right so let's go further so tonight I want to just shift if you don't mind and tonight's lesson is entitled the hidden lessons the hidden lessons and I want you to pay close attention because we're just going to read through some scriptures and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you five lessons that you have to learn before you move hmm Five lessons that you have to learn before you shift. Ah, my she. Okay, let's go. In 1 Kings 17, let's look at verse 2. We're going to read 2 through 4. Then, everybody say then. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Pay attention. Leave here. Turn eastward. Underline this in your Bible, and hide. Underline that, and hide. In the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, you will drink from the brook. Here it is, underline this. And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there it's not coming where you are it's gonna be there 
slide down, if you will, to the sixth verse. Because if God said it, it has to happen. But it won't happen until you go there. Mm. Come on here. It's not going to happen until you leave your present and go into your future. Come on here. Let's go. Verse 6. The ravens, just like he said in 4, it happened in 6. The ravens brought him bread. Not just bread. And meat. How often did they do it? In the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. Let me give you something to look forward to. And he drank from the brook. Get ready to underline this. Sometime later, the brook dried up. Underline that. Why would God let your blessing dry up? Mm, come on here. Watch this because there had been no rain in the land. Verse eight, and I think this is our last one, yep. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon. Stay there. New location, new blessing, new surrounding, new demand. Same God that did it over there, gonna do it over here. Oh my God, let me get your faith together. Your quarantine is over. <laughs> but I can't let you out of your quarantine until you get every lesson I got for you while I got you on lockdown by yourself. Woo! Those of you that know that it's not going to be like this always, can you just go into like a five second praise of worship knowing that it's about to get better? Five. Four. Three. Two. Yeah. Glory to God. give you glory before I even shift it's already looking better let's go stay there stay there cause I'm gonna have you to do something crazy when you get over there I have directed a widow there to supply you with food what lessons do you learn let's back up everybody go back up to verses 2 and 3 then the word of the Lord came to Elijah can, I, can we talk for a minute then what does it mean then because in order for you to get to Ahab you had to be instructed there too. You don't get your then until you complete your now. He does not get his then until he has prophesied, until he has opened his mouth and declared there will be no rain or do except in my word. Watch me. Some of y'all are looking for a then, but you have not completed your assignment of now gotta get this because we are people that don't like to complete stuff it doesn't matter how you start but it's how you finish I'm gonna say that again it doesn't matter how you start watch me what good does it make to walk to Ahab's door but not open your mouth what good does it make to go to the place of, that you've been ordered to go to but you've never up, up, knocked on the door you never opened your mouth and you never spoke watch me you can't get your then instructions until you complete your now demand 
Come on, let's go here. Once he completes it, the Bible says, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Everybody say then. If you come on, if you're on the screen, just type, just type the word then. He says, then, then, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. What he says, leave here. Turn eastward and hide in the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan. So I looked up this word, the kareth. It comes from an ancient Hebrew word, and the root meaning is to write this down: to cut away, to cut up, or to cut off. To cut away, to cut up, or to cut off. Everybody, look at me. This is the hidden lesson. When I say the hit lesson, this is the death lesson. What does that mean? First you bring me out. You give me this huge stage. You let me knock on Ahab's door. Bam, bam, bam. You let Ahab come to the door, and I am the one that gets to prophesy and say to Ahab, thus saith the Lord. There will be no rain nor dew except at my word. And I'm excited because this is the first time that you all hear me. This is the first time that you all see me. So this is my takeoff platform. This is the opportunity that I've been waiting on all my life. And it is finally here. Hallelujah. And he says, are you done? Are you done speaking? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I'm ready to take off. Now go. Go because I'm about to cut you off. Go because I'm about to shut you down. Go because I'm about to hide you. Because I want to make sure that you're dead before I bring you out. I want to make sure that you didn't get excited because I used you one time. I want to see if you're going to give me glory. I want to see if I'm still going to get the praise out of your life. I know you waited for a while to get into this 17th chapter, but I got I got more. I got to test you later on in the same chapter. The same chapter that I use you, I'm going to pull you back. If some of y'all, I came to let you know, you're only in a holding pattern. <laughs> Come on here. 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 Let's talk for a minute. Let's talk for a minute. Ready? Let's talk. He says, he says, he says, oh, watch me. He said, I'm going to need you to go there and I'm going to need you to hide. I'm going to hide you. I'm going to hide your name. But I thought I was going to take off. Watch me. There's some things that I need to work on you with. Hmm. Come on here. Um, I got some cutting to do. I got to cut some things to make sure that I get all the glory I want. So let me put you back here and just let me let you hide. No. But why did you bring me out? Watch me. Because I wanted you to know that I was with you. I only brought you out to just let you know that what you've been feeling and what you've been thinking ain't off. Just because I brought you out don't mean you're ready yet. Come on here. If David wasn't ready when I brought him out from the field and brought him in the house and stood him in front of his brothers and poured oil on him and prophesied and told him you're going to be the next king over Israel, and then what did I do? I hid him back in the field. And some of y'all, why does he had me? Because he want to make sure you did. He want to make sure that you didn't get arrogant because he used you one time. He want to make sure that you don't get puffed and lifted up in your gift. Come on here. He want to make sure that you're not leaning on your degree. He want to make sure that you're not leaning on what God has already put in you. Watch me, and I'm going to watch me. Can I give you a scripture? Let's, let, let's, let me give you a scripture of death. Let me give you a scripture of death, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, we're going to give you a scripture of death. We're going to give you a scripture of death. Watch me. This is the, I call it the hiding lesson, but it's the death lesson also. Ready? In 1 Corinthians 15 31, he says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's a line. I die daily. What does that mean I die daily? I kill my ego. I don't get caught up in the hype. I don't give in to applause. I don't let people make a God out of me because the same people that lift you can destroy you. But if I lift you, no weapon formed against you is going to be able to prosper. So I'll hide you 
and I'll make sure that I slay you. Can I, let's back it up. Everybody, please look. Please look at me. So I begin to think about, so who else can I look at that he brought back, but then pulled back? He brought out, and then he pulled them back. And some of y'all think because he pulled you back, you don't have it. Let's talk. Remember when Christ was 12? Remember when they went to the festivals of the Jews and they left him there? At 12, his parents leave him and he is sitting in the temple. He is doing what he came to earth to do. He is speaking life because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh. He is speaking. He is speaking. For three days, he sat there speaking. He out there. And Mary said, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? And they went back and they got him. Watch me. And they pulled him back. And the Bible says something. And he obeyed or submitted to his parents. A pullback is to test your obedience. Woo! It's getting quiet now. How come ain't nobody saying nothing now? Ah, watch me. And he pulled back. And at the age of 13, he hides him. Please pay attention. Until he is 30. How dare you millennials think that God has forgotten about you? How dare you believe that God still don't have his hand on your life? Has he not done enough to prove to you that favor is on your life? Those of you that know that God don't have to prove to you that he got your back, he got your name. Those of you that know that he doesn't have to keep reminding you that you are anointed and that you are highly favored. Those of you that know that you have an expected end. So whatever you got to slay in me, God, I am on the altar. I am asking you to slay me. Get my attitude right. Get my words right. Get my ego right. Slay me until your will is done in me. For I would want my character to keep me. Lift your hands, open your mouths, and begin to worship God. And while you're worshiping, make sure you're dead by saying two words. Yes, Lord. I die daily. I die daily. I, but it hurt to die. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to be painful. Ah, and some of y'all, because you won't die fast, it's called a slow death. Because as soon as we think you dead, you rise back up. But you rise too soon. So he had to lay you back down and work on you some more. Do me a favor, won't you? Type on the screen. If you're in the building, just keep saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Just say it for like 20 seconds if you don't mind. Can I get you to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. It's the death lesson. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And some of y'all, while you're hiding, while he has you hidden, you're being slain every day. He is killing your attitude. He's making sure that you're going to make, that you follow his lead and not your own. This is the death lesson in a hidden place. Wow. Wow. But I have passion. But I have passion. Zeal is good. But zeal that comes out soon becomes a terror because huh. you might have zeal but you don't know what to do with it you want to talk Bible let's talk oh, I'm down in my nose but let's go here who bust out too soon when Moses saw his people being mistreated his gifts start kicking his passion start kicking but his character kicked in and he committed a murder but this is what God has called you to do. Aren't you called to free your people? I am called, but not like this. So let me pull you back and put you on the backside of a desert. And let me let you stay there for 40 years. Because you spent your first 40 thinking you were somebody. I'm going to use your next 40 to prove you ain't nobody. Oh, but I'm going to use your last 40 to let everybody know I could use anybody. <laughs> If I were you, I would just give in to the pullback. Fall back. 
Fall back. You ain't ready to be no worship leader yet. Fall back. You ain't ready to be no evangelist yet. Fall back. You ain't ready to be no leader yet. Fall back. Your house ain't right. Fall back. You ain't even divorced yet. Fall back. Fall back. Fall back. You ain't got your flesh under control. Fall back. You ain't got your temper right. Fall back. You still think you all of that in a bag of chips. Fall back. You think somebody owe you something. Fall back. You got the spirit of entitlement. Fall. <laughs> Die, why don't you? Die so we could have your funeral so you could resurrect. Oh, that I might know him. In the power of his resurrection, you think I'm dead, but I'm only resting. Come on here. He's not dead. He's asleep. I better stop. Let's go. I'm sorry. I got it. Yeah, my. Wait. There's some people that you look at they now, but you don't know how long they waited. There's some people you judge in they reaping season, but you don't know they sowing. Those of you that know that you are now walking in the blessings of the Lord, and you are finally, finally, finally seeing the secrets of God be revealed in your life. On the screen, can you release a praise? In the building, if I'm talking to you, I, I need you to open your mouth and release the best praise you have right here. Go, go, go. Hey! Let's go. You thought you were ready, but every now and then God will give you an exam. He'll give you a quiz, and He'll prove I can't take you there yet. If I take you there, you're not gonna be there. But if you wait on me, when you get there, you're going to be able to stay there. When you get there, you're going to be able to stay there. When you... I got to calm down. If I... Damn, why don't you... Die! Will you hurry up and... For I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But the only way that I can take the pain, that it is he that lives within me. Yay! Come on, y'all in the building. If you're in the building, you're not here by accident. God sent you to help release the sound around the world. Those of you that are at your home, they that wait. Then I give you dad. You dead when you can praise God in a bad situation. Hey, my son, the boat Hey, come on, stop saying, Oh, but I shall rise again. <laughs> come on, say. But I shall rise again. But my mind shall rise. But my oil shall rise. But my name shall come up. I felt the anointing on that one. But my name shall come up. You're going to be called to audition. You're going to be called to interview. You're going to be called to fill in. But they don't know that the fill in is about to be permanent. Your delay. Will you hurry up and die? Will you please stop fighting? Will you please stop taking matters into your own hand? Will you please stay still? Stop running all over the place. Stand still and see. Because when I get there, he said, go there and stay. <laughs> this is going to be your last walk. Everybody that knows 
that you're dead in Christ. Release a praise right here. Go. I gotta go. Yeah. Hurry up and die. But why you wait? Here's my line. But why you wait? Here come the next lesson. Trust in the Lord. Here go the next lesson. Trust. Why are you waiting? You got to believe. He going to do exactly what he said. Watch him. Watch him hook me up. Watch him take care of me. Watch him make a way. Come on, start just. Come on, just start hitting this and say, I trust in the Lord. Come on, this is a trust lesson. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, we got to get this. It's crazy. Hold on, well, that's just lesson number one. I'm move to so, sit down. Hold on. Come on, write this down. Come on, write this down. First, there's a death lesson. Then there's a trust lesson. Okay, first, there's a death lesson. And then there's a trust lesson. First, there's a death lesson. And then there's a trust lesson. Because I'm going to make sure you're dead by making you wait. Hey, my Shia. Watch it. He says, he says, watch what he says. Let's go. Verse 4. You will drink from the brook. You will drink. But question, how come don't nobody else know what this brook is? How come don't nobody? Because it's called a hidden treasure. It's a, it's, it's a place that only has your name on it. It's a reserved space that nobody else could find they can't even hear it only you will know where it is come on here he says you will drink from the brook here's the line and I have directed and I have directed nature 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 is going to hook you up it's not going to be a fleshly thing. You're not going to be able to look to man nor woman. You're only going to look to me, the creator of the air. I've com I have commanded or directed the ravens to supply you with food there. That's a walk to tell me that I got to sit and wait on a, a bird to drop off something. This ain't no Uber Eats. This ain't no Uber Eats. Watch this. this. And then because he believed in four, everybody listen, because he believed in four, he ate in six. Because he believed, everybody you got to hear, before you receive it, you got to believe it's on its way. It's almost like you got to roll out a picnic basket and just prepare for something that hasn't even shown up yet. <laughs> Ain't this a mess? Ain't this a mess? Ain't this a mess? You got to literally fix a table. Hey, Basha. And set the, the plate out, the fork, the spoon out, and then go and scoop you some water and sit there and wait on God. Oh, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Let's go, let's go. What's we, what's we, what's we? And about in the sixth verse, pay attention, please pay attention. Please pay attention. The ravens brought him bread and meat. Pay attention. In the morning. In the morning. I'm only going to give you enough to hold you to the evening. I'm only going to feed you in the morning and then I'm going to let you live with it and then I'm going to make you wait again in the evening. Watch me. Then I'm going to make you wake up the next morning and wait again. In other words, I'm going to take you through a season that every day is going to be a wait. It's like those of you, I want to come in, what camera? I want to go here. I want to go here. It's like those of you that are living from check to check. Nope, I'm not going to let you live in overflow quite yet. But I'm going to see if you're going to trust me to your next pay period. 
I'm going to see if you're going to, I'm going to pay this month's bill. I'm going to pay this month's bill. I'm going to make sure that your bills are paid this month. And then I'm going to get you up to the last day. And I'm going to make you sit there and wait on me. Wait a minute. Come on here. I'm waiting. Wait, wait, wait. You can't boast on the fact you wait. The only thing that you could boast on is how you wait. I wish I could hear. Wait, 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 wait. Let me give you something. Wait, 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 wait. Those of you that say, God, I trust you, God. Can I get you to type on the screen? I trust God. Stop. Do you really trust him? Do you only trust him when you can see a bus coming? Or do you trust him when you don't see nothing coming in your direction? Can I give you a scripture? Everybody, you got to hear me. Here's, 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 here's the trust lesson. Look at the screen. Psalm 62 and 8. Trust in him at all times. Trust him at all times. Oh, it's a lot in that all. Oh, I wish he had just said trust in the Lord. Uh-uh. Trust in him at all times. You people, while you trusted in him, pour out your heart to him. Pour out your heart. That is not a complaint. That is not a complaint. Because he's not into complaints. Because out of your mouth, come the secrets of your so when I'm pouring I'm like God I trust you I believe in you I still know that you're able to do it and I might not be able to see it but the fact that you said that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed back for bread and guess what God you've done it before you're going to do it again God the same God that did it last month going to do it this month God I have not compromised I have not slept I have not dipped I have not left I am still waiting on you but while I wait I give you glory but while I wait I give you glory but while I wait I praise you for what you have already done because you're the Lord God who was and is and is to come. You're the Lord God who was and is and is to come. So it's a trust. You got to hear me. Because some of y'all have to see it before you praise him. Some of y'all, if it don't happen this year, then it's not mine. Who said that? Whose calendar are you on? Can I get you to say, Lord, I trust you? Come on, we're going here. Lesson number one was the death lesson. Number two was a, a trust lesson. Number three is a good steward lesson. <laughs> All right, it's going to get really quiet now. Give me time. It's going to get really quiet now. But I need to just slow down for one minute. And I want some of y'all to pay close attention to what I say to you right now. Because you got the death lesson, you got the trust lesson. But now I got to teach the good steward lesson. Because hmm. the Bible says in verse 7, sometime later, the blessing ran out. Sometime later, you got fired. Sometime later, a virus showed up and the whole earth had to be shut down. And even the blessing that God gave you, you couldn't go to it. Hmm. Some time later, the brook dry. Why did it dry up? Because of COVID. Because there had been no rain. Because what nobody spending no money. Because what nobody going support nobody's business. Could nobody do nothing? And some time later, if you don't deposit something, then don't expect something to come out. Now that's a whole other revelation on sowing. Because some of y'all. You never sold, so how dare you expect to receive? You were only a taker of the water. Woo! You were only a taker of the water. So now that you've drank it all, don't cry out now because you thirsty. <laughs> now watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Here's the lesson, here's the lesson. Everybody, you got to get this one. 
Because I'm, I'm looking at this like, God, I need you to speak to me. Then the next thing, it's a, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And now you give me a command that I have to go from here to Zarephath, which is a hundred miles. Stop. There's no car. Stop. There's no airplane. Stop. There's no train. Stop. How you going to get there? We don't hear of any horses or chariots. And all we hear is, all we, all we imagine is, is a walk. Stop. Do you think that he stopped monitoring the brook and saw it getting low and said, let me not wait until it all run out, but let me just scoop some and put it to the side just in case. I got to wait a little while longer. It's a good steward. Hear me clearly? I warned some of y'all stack. Ah, I feel a stack in anointing. Damn, I say, I feel, oh, wait, wait, wait. Those of you that God been taking care of you, hear the word of the Lord. Stack. Yeah, I feel a tsunami coming, but you're going to have to catch it. Now, let me give you, let me give you a scripture to back up, to back up what I'm saying. And I'm, I want you to hear me. Everybody got to hear me. Give me a camera to look at. Which one I'm looking at? Let's go here. I love you. Anytime I love you, I mean I'm about to get you. Um, the government going to take his. Uncle Sam ain't going to even let you see. He just going to take it. So Uncle Sam going to make sure that he is well taken care of. Those of us that walk by faith, we immediately give God his. So, Uncle Sam got his. God got his. Do you have yours? Do you have enough to carry if the brook run dry? Or will you have to run down to the unemployment office and beg them to give you some water mm, so that you can make it to your, des your next destination? Oh, my God. Let's back it up with Scripture. Those of you that are um, in the screen, I need you to begin to confess this. I need you to start typing on the screen. I have a stacking anointing. Mm. I'm going to take my time right here. Gonna, time? Okay, come on here. I have a stacking anointing. Those of you, every musician, every preacher, every evangelist, everybody that sing, everybody that have your own business, I don't care, every single parent, every widow, whatever your status, there's an anointing about to be released. Hmm. I need you. I've never been taught how to save. He going to show you. I feel God up in here. He going to show you what you going to have to do to take care of you. Oh, the, oh I, I'm quoting the scripture too. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. <laughs> Can I give you a, can I give you a can I give you a stack in scripture? Oh, y'all weren't ready for this one. I want to bust some of y'all in y'all here, but I can't see you. Listen, go to Proverbs 21 and 20. I say I love the Bible. 20. God, I come against this spending spirit. I bind shopping and you ain't got no savings. I come against this credit card that you've been carrying around and you talking about I believe that God going to erase my debt. Why would he erase it if you're going to fill it up again? I'm talking to you today. Let's go. Oh, you ain't shouting out. Let's go. Here it is. Ready? Let's go Bible. The wise store up choice food and olive oil. Let's back up. Read that one more time. Some of y'all look slow. The wise. Stop. You're either wise or you're foolish. The foolish didn't have no oil in their lamp. But the wise made sure that they had stacked enough to wait on the groom to come, the blessing to come. You got another blessing coming, but do you have enough oil to wait? Ooh! I feel an ouch 
in the spirit realm. So y'all understand, y'all understand. Here it is. Let's read it again. The wise store up. Can you everybody say choice? Stop. What does that mean? It is a conscious decision. It is a conscious. I choose to put this up. Is nobody making me do nothing? It is certain things that I have looked at and I choose to pick it. He says, choice foods. This is the ones that I've chosen. Bam. And not just oils, but olive oil. Here it is. But foods. Gulp theirs down. A fool don't worry about tomorrow. Because they're just eating everything on the plate right now. And some of you, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. You have been past tense, living like a fool. Not an insult, not an insult. Because I too was a fool. I need you to hear me. I can't explain it. But let's just talk years now. I would get paid, and the Lord said to me, put this money up at a credit union that you can't get to. Have this money taken out of your check and send it way out that you would have to drive so far that it'll make you think twice before you get out there. You better have a full tank to go get it. In other words, I need you to make sure it's out of your reach. Woo! Let's talk. So I start storing up choice foods and olive oils. I said, first I started, real talk, I sent $20 every pay period. $20. I'm like, look, look at me. Because I, I don't come from a stacking background. Then I looked out there, every now and then I call out there, it's for internet, and check my balance. I need you to, t <laughs> I can't say touch your neighbor. I need you to say to myself, I'm about to check my balance. Hey, Basha. Because a, a self check is also a check of your discipline. So then when I started stacking the 20, I doubled it. Let's go to 50 every pay period. 50 every pay period? That's $100 a month that I done sent up. Shut up. Then I started sending that out. Then I checked my balance. Check your balance. But it was a choice that I made to not start out with something that I couldn't keep up with. So as I put that up, it kept growing. As that kept growing, the blessing showed up. Some of y'all praying for a blessing, but you're not stacked to receive it. Your house is ready. God got your house on hold, but you don't have the deposit to get it. So your stacking is not going to be in vain. You ready? Then I had to get something else. Then I started back stacking. Started stacking. Then I, me and Anna were in a one-bedroom apartment. Everybody say one-bedroom. And because I started stacking, I didn't call them, but the word got to me. There's a condo in High Park. It's three bedrooms. It's two baths. And I thought of you and want to know if you're interested. I'm going to give you, count to three, I'm going to give you one chance to either type your name or say your name. One, two, three. John Hanna! What am I doing? Only the stackers shout. Because I would hate to send somebody to you and you're not ready yet. Because then you're going to get mad because you can't get it. So I'm not going to give you the opportunity to blame God for your foolishness. I hear the Lord say, own up to your own foolishness, then I'll make you wise. Oh, I said that again. Own up to your own foolishness, then I'll make you wise. So then I started stacking, then this condo came available. And because of where I worked, I couldn't get a loan for the full amount. But I had enough for the full 
put down the deposit on the house. They said, well, in order for you to get the house, they would have to lower it $10,000. And, and the person said, I'm not willing to lower it that $10,000. This is his suggestion. I've never, bought another, I've never bought property a day in my life, but I've stacked. Because stack demands favor. <laughs> God, I hope you're getting this. Please, please tell me you're getting this. Please tell me. So the, they called me in. They said, well, listen, the man said he's not willing to lower the condo. Um, it is, this is years ago, um, $89,000 in Hyde Park. This is years ago. It's three bedrooms, two baths, hardwood floors, fireplace, you know, little balcony on the front. Nice. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll enter into a contract with you that within five years, you privately or personally have to have given me this $10,000. Really? So me not being in control of my future, but know that God has ordered my present, I got to trust him that all things are going to work together for my good. So I took my money and signed an agreement that within that time span, I would get, i hand him $10,000. Touch your neighbor, that means your computer, and say, I'm not going to have to wait that long. God, I wish I had. Come on here, I need you to touch the computer and say, I'm not going to have to wait that long. Yeah, Mashaya Mazandarubusiki. Yeah. It's getting ready to happen. Ready? So we move in, we set it up. We um, at first place. We move in. It's three bedrooms. It's two baths. We're in there living, living this kind of life. I'm blackish. Where you live, High Park? Oh, you want them booze you and say what you want to say? Where y'all live? High Park. So I'm, I'm living in High Park right on 55th Street. I would walk through the community. I would walk to my barber shop. We would walk to the grocery store. We would walk to restaurants. We're in High Park. We would walk to the lake. Where you live? High Park. Got to put the on the end. But while I'm living, I'm sewing. And while I'm living, I'm stacking. While I'm living, I'm sewing, and while I'm living, I'm stacking. While I'm living, I'm sewing, and while I'm living, I'm stacking. While I'm living, I'm sewing, and while I'm living, I'm stacking. Ready? And here go my phone again. I feel in my spirit, in my God, your season is up in this square footage. I wake up one day, and I can feel it like this. Time to move. Time to move. Time to move. Time to move. Forward march. Forward march. You've been living. You've been stacking. You've been living. You've been stacking. You've been sewing. You've been stacking. You've been sewing. You've been stacking. More square footage. Call my boy Robert Jones. I said, I said, Rob, I can't explain it, but I feel like God ready to do something. I tell Anna, I say, Anna, I'll be back. I'm going to find our next location. I just feel I could get some of y'all to just speak that by faith. I'm about to go find my next location. Oh my God, God. Yeah, my shaya, my son. Some say, well, I'm not even looking, but the Holy Ghost is about to give you what you didn't even ask for. I just need you to open him up, say, I'm ready for whatever God has in store for me. So we get in the car, we start riding around. I was like, huh? Mm. Call a real estate agent. She takes us, huh? I don't like it. She says, well, I have one more, but it's really, really huge. And I don't believe what they're asking for 
you can afford it. But I've been sowing it, I've been stacking. But I've been sowing it, I've been stacking. But I've been sowing and I've been stacking. So take me what you think I won't get. I'm trying to get your faith up up in here. You have been in the back long enough and God is ready to enlarge your territory, but it's not going to happen. So she takes me to this place because I've been a good steward. And they said, well, it's in the Oakwood community. It's two blocks off the lake. It's five bedrooms. It's a penthouse, Mr. Hannah. <laughs> but I've been sewing and I've been stacking. It's a penthouse. It's just you and your wife. And your sister lives with you. And we've only been looking at three bedrooms. But this one is five bedrooms with three bathrooms. It has two private decks and two fireplaces. As a matter of fact, Miss Hannah, it's the top floor. It's called the penthouse. But I've been sewing and I've been stacking. <laughs> but I've been sewing and I've been stacking. <laughs> but I've been sewing and I've been stacking. You looking at the outward appearance, but God know the heart. And I've been sowing and I've been stacking. Who am I talking to? And I've been sowing and I've been stacking. Come on here, lift your hands and begin to worship God wherever you are. For some of y'all, you're about to, those in the building, can you stand to your feet? For those of y'all that are at home, if you are able to, can you stand wherever you are? There's an anointing about to get on you and it's literally about to push you, push you, push you out of the holding pattern that you have been in. And I walked in. Listen carefully. And it was huge. Back then they had on MTV Cribs. And I said, like, this belongs on MTV Cribs. Because a doctor lived here. And it came with two, two parking spaces in the back. And you could look out the windows, you could see the lake, you could look down there, you could see the skyline of Chicago. I said, like, man, this is 3,000 square feet on one floor. You own the entire fourth floor. I said, I like this. She said, then make an offer then make an offer. Because what he's going to tell you to do is going to sound stupid, but I dare you to make it. Because what he's going to tell you to do is going to sound stupid, but I dare you to make it. Because what he tell you to do is going to look stupid, but I dare you to say it. What he's going to tell you to do not going to make no sense, but we walk by faith and not by sight, but I dare you to say it. And I said, okay, I'll make an offer. I said, then my offer is 250 And she laughed at me. She says, Mr. Hannah, this place is worth close to half a million dollars. You do know that? So you told me to make an offer. You said make an offer. Here it is. 250. Run that. Come on here. Some of y'all watch me. When you say it, you're not saying it with confidence. When you're speaking it, you're not speaking as if God got your back. They're asking you, how much do you want to make during a pandemic? But you worried about what the economy is going through, but you are not participating in what the world is participating. You are. So I'll take it, but I promise you, he's not going to be happy. I say, you told me to make an offer, and I made it. And I walked away, I said, God, please don't let that man go. That person go be up past 255. I'm going to give him a little wiggle room. She called me back. She says, oh, Mr. Hannah, I cannot explain this. As a matter of fact, I can. He's angry at the condo association, so he wants to get them. I say, how? Because if he sells you this property for this price, it'll lure everybody else. I said, then he need to get them. And he need to use me to get them. I told the Lord, use me. Those of you that wanted God to use you and he would do what he want to do to change the situation just to get you into where he has called you because your next is now. Your next is now. And 
the man came back and said, 255. He took my wiggle room. Because there will be no rain nor dew except at my word. Because there will be no rain nor dew except at my word. I prophesy my space and I prophesy my location. I'm not here by chance or by accident, but God has led me. And I end up buying, pay attention. So when I bought this condo, I literally, ready, pay attention. I bought the one in Hyde Park for 80,000. I sold it for 160. I sent the man his 10, took all the money that was left and put it down on the penthouse. I stayed at the penthouse maybe three to five years, and before the real estate market crashed, I bought it for 255, and I sold it for 586. But I've been sowing and I've been stacking. 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 Those of you that know that God has been using you to sow and stack, even if you haven't been stacking it, you're about to get a stacking anointing. I need you to lift your hands and worship God, not for where you are, but for where you're going. Ten seconds, go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Come on. Three. Your turn. Your turn. Your turn. Your turn. Your turn. Your turn. Come on. I need you to begin to confess. My turn. Lesson learn. My turn. Lesson learn. My turn. Lesson learn. My turn. Come on, say it. Lesson learn. My turn. Lesson learn. My turn. Those of you that have learned the lesson to die. Open up and say, lesson learned. Those of you that have learned the lesson to trust. Come on, say lesson learned. Those of you that have learned the lesson to sow, say lesson learned. And the last lesson was prayer. Because the Bible says, then the word came. Then, because I believe that before you got to the then, you he built up your prayer life. So then the word comes, which is your answer. So everyone hear me. You have to hear me now. You have not because you ask not. I believe that when the water started going low, I believe that in prayer the Lord had him to stack. I believe that when the brook ran dry, he was praying. Then the word of the Lord came. Then the word of the Lord came. Then the word of the Lord came. Calling your friend is not praying. Telling someone to pray for you is not you praying for. That's why he have you in a hidden place. So that you can only lean on your own prayer life. Can I show you this last scripture and I'm done? Those in the building, get ready. Because if God ordained you to be in this building something's about to stir in you. Look at the screen. Isaiah 65, 24. Before they call. Before they call. I will answer. Watch me. But they have to call. Before they call. But they have to call. I will answer. Look at this. While, while, while they are speaking. But you gotta speak in order for him to hear. So your prayer life is built up in your hidden place. And for some of y'all, he's just been sharpening your prayer life. Can I, I hear you and I see you. Can I, allow me the Lord to show you something. I hear you, but I don't fall out like they fall out. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you, but I listen for your whispers. I lean in for you I read your lips. You are my Hannah. 
because when you pray, you pray from a sincere place. Loud don't make you sincere. Hey, Mashi. Randarabasaya matandolo sidi. Show you. Lift your hands wherever you are. Hmm. Hmm. When I call out certain things, I want you to say, lesson learned. I've learned to let my will die. Lesson learned. Hmm. I've learned to trust in the Lord. Lesson learned. I've learned or I am learning to be a good steward. Lesson learned. And I've learned how to pray. Lesson learned. I need you to hear me. Please pay attention. The roads are clear. The runway is clear. And you're about to take off because your lessons have been learned. What it took some five years to do, you will do in one. For it shall come upon you suddenly. Your status will change immediately. It is your turn. Lift your hands wherever you are. Open your mouths in worship. And for that I give you glory. And for that I give you glory. Your wait is over. Your wait is over. Come on, a few minutes. For your wait is over. Come on. Come on, get your strength up. 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 Please, 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 I beg you. I feel some of you all saying, but I messed up and I hear the Lord say, but you learn from the mess up, which, 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 which owes you another chance. Come on here, come on here, come on here. Because you've learned, which means that now I can trust you. Come on, lift your hands, open your mouths and begin to worship. All things are working together for your good. All things are working together for your good. All things are working together for your good. You have not wasted time. 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 Those in the building, I need you to open your mouth and release the worship. I need the world to hear your worship. Come on, give me five or ten seconds. Give me ten seconds. Open your mouth and I give you glory and I honor you and I magnify you. I thank you, God, that I did not die in this season. I thank you, God, that I did not lose my mind. I thank you, God, that I did not walk away. I thank you, God, that I did not give up. I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you that you have kept me. You have kept me. You have kept me. You have kept me. You have kept my mind. I thank you that I did not go crazy. I thank you that I did not go as stupid as I could have gone. And I give you glory. Come on, y'all, please. I need, I need you to open your mouths. And I give you glory. I give you glory. Hallelujah. I need you to be on your own where you are in your home. I need you to hear me loud and clear. Better is the end of a thing. Better is the end of it. And you have come to the end of this season. Open your mouths. Ziki Andabo Mandana say, come on. Every millennial, if you're watching me, I need you to open your mouths. Everyone in your 30s and your 40s, I need you to open your mouths. Pay attention. Everyone over 50, I need you to go for broke. Hey ma batandaraba batande le sheke. Irandala say sheke. Londo lesson learned. Yeah, yanda. 
Hey, higher, my, my God, my God, my God. Hey, and the wisdom of God be released upon you, and the wisdom of God be released upon you, and the anointing, the stacking anointing, the saving anointing, the urge to save be upon you. The wisdom and the clarity that God is about to give you, that you are literally about to stack. And I pray that God put a note in your spirit. I come against everyone that come and take advantage of you. I come against the spirit of manipulation and control that want to keep you down. The devil is a liar. God is about to expose those that are draining you. Yeah, Messiah. Few more minutes. Hallelujah. 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 I need you to know your name is about to be brought up. I know two people that never called me, but God told me to call them. As a result of their sowing, as a result of their faithfulness, their blessing is now without an ask from man, but a prayer to God. Oh, yeah, yonder, oh, see. Come on, we're about to get ready to shut this down. But I need you to hear me loud and clear. It's going to be huge. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's going to be big. I want you, I need you to hear me. Nothing happens without a release. If you hear what I'm about to say to some of you all, and I can pick you up in the spirit, you have not been faithful in your sowing. You fell off in your tithing. I was at home the other day and the Lord said to me, every week I need you to look for a way to bless somebody. <laughs> he said, for the remaining of the year, I want you to look for a week that you're going to sow into somebody and that you're going to release. That means that he could trust me to hold the blessing. For some of you all, you are about to be a corporate sponsor of kingdom. Every week, you have to listen for my instructions. This is a young lady I know who was waiting to go back to school, and she texted me, I finally made it back. And the Lord said, here it is right here. Right here. Right here. This is it. This is where I want you to go. I grabbed my phone and immediately sent her $300. Cash app, go. What am I doing? I'm releasing. You ready to hear me? I sold that in one day, and when I woke up the next day, somebody had cashed up me a thousand. I need you to hear me. It will not happen until you, if you're only a taker, you'll die in a drought. Those of you that are watching me online, I need you back on your square with your tithing. I need you back on your square. I need you back on your square with your giving. Everybody hear me. Two C's, 2858. Corporate, there's some business owners. Every business owner, I'm gonna push you 108. 108. Everyone else, get a 28 or $58 seed in your hand. If you don't have that, then you get the best seed you can. But I dare you to put an eight to it. I don't care if it's eight cents. I don't care if it's eight cents. I don't care if it's eight cents. If you're going to text and give you text words, N-O-C-S-E, 77977. Put it on the screen. 
if you're gonna text and give, you're gonna text the words NLCSE to 77977. If you're going to, on our app, you can give it on our app. If you wanna write a check, you write a check. For those of y'all that are out of town, you say, I don't, I don't believe in this texting, then you write a check and you mail it into this address. Put it on the screen. You mail it to 5517 South Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. If you hear what I'm telling you to do, you will never die in a drought. If I were to be honest with you, can I be totally honest? And I'm not letting you all in my business. Three years outside this pandemic, the Lord said to me, take whatever I give you on the road and put it up. It's not to be spent. Stack this for three years straight. You're not to live off your extra. <laughs> and some of y'all are working a full-time job and part-time, and the Lord say, only live off your full and stack your part. I'm in your business! For some of y'all, I hear the Lord say, you always set the goal so high so you fail so fast. So even if it's five, if it's 10, if it's 20, you have a responsibility to put something up. What am, I, what am I stacking for? For your blessing. Your blessing will not knock on your door until you are ready to receive it. You gotta hear me. Your blessing will not knock on your door until you are ready to receive it. And I will make sure that you have everything. And even though you got it, it's still going, what I'm going to give you going to add up to what you, go beyond what you sow. I, I know this life. You can't, you, can't nobody talk me out of this one. Because I have a stacking anointing. And the, Tucson is in the building. Raise your hand, Tucson. Not on the camera. It's right, you might try to bribe him. <laughs> you got a mask on. You don't even know who he is. It's all the way up to to make sure, watch me, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Every time we go out of town, I give him my money. Take it to the bank, take it to the bank, get it out of here, go put it up, go stack it. But what, why, are you, why are you giving it to him? Because I'm actually letting him hold his future. <laughs> I'm giving him an opportunity to see what his future is going to look like. And so it gives me joy to hear him talking about how he's stacking, how he's stacking. Because to be anointed means to be brushed up on. To be anointed means that somebody got close up on you to brush up on you. <laughs> and the same oil that's on me be on you. Because I got a cash anointing. I got a stacking anointing. Come on here. <laughs> Get your seat ready. Lift it up to the Lord. Open and say, God, this is just the beginning. I need you to commit to this. Come on, lift your hands. Close your eyes for one minute. Those at home right now, please close your eyes. Please close your eyes. Please. Some of y'all, you're going to miss your season. Oh, this is just another, and this is just another online thing. This ain't no, just no nother. This is God talking to you. You're going to trust him in your tithes. You're going to trust him in your giving. Because you're in the back right now. But oh, when you come forward, no one will be able to deny that the hand of God is on your life. People will look at you and know that the blessings of the Lord are on you. When you walk in, you'll look like what you're not even there yet. You'll look like you got money. People will walk up and ask you, well, what do you do? They're not questioning you. They're questioning the oil that is on your life. Come on here. Poverty has a look and so does wealth. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. Poverty has a look and so does wealth. I'm gonna go further. Poverty has a smell and so does wealth. You'll smell like you got money. My God, see, spiritual things get spooky sometimes. And there's some of you all, I was on an island sitting up in there waiting to get my massage and some other people of another nationality walked in and looked at me and said, well, what do you do? You look like you own the place. I said, God bless you. <laughs> I went to the auto show where they don't let anybody sit inside the Rolls, Royce, the Bentleys, 
And when I walked up, the man looked behind the, the rope and looked at me like, who are you? Come here. You want to sit in the Bentley? I said, sure I do. <laughs> Come on, I need you to look at me. You're going to be called out to test your future. Somebody asked me, Pastor Hannah, would, would you buy a Bentley? I said, I threw my nose up like, I really don't want one. Then he said something crazy. What if they gave it to you? I said, prophesy. I'll take the keys and sell it later. Listen, lift your seat up to the Lord. You're not going to be shooting up in this guy at me. <laughs> lift your seat up to the Lord and say, God, I trust you. Close your eyes and begin to worship God for your future. Come on, just a few seconds. I promise you, you're about to come out of a hidden place. I thank you, God, for the future millionaires of this church. I thank you, God, that within five years, we will see some of them turn suddenly. We see their income changing, and God, they will be sowers and they will be givers. Whatever is asked for, they will always be able to give it and always be able to sow it. I thank you, God, for the square footage that's being increased. I thank you for the houses that are being released. I thank you for the gifts and the cars. Mm. I didn't, I'm, I'm only going to obey God. God, I thank you for the keys that are being handed over. Come on here. And I give you glory and I honor you, God. I thank you, God, for what's about to happen. And I thank you that you could trust, trust your people with the seeds that they are sowing because you give it seed to the sower. Hallelujah. Come on, I need you to begin to sow right now. I keep hearing that song. The Lord is my strength. Whom shall I fear? That's how I sing by, by myself. Whom shall I be afraid? I sing myself happy. I will wait on you. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Those that are in the building, the Lord we're going to ask that you respect the social distancing. In that lobby area, you'll see where you're supposed to give your seat. You have to go out that way and you can... Give me a minute. Don't walk out yet. We're going to let them go offline. And then God has a word for those of you that are in the building. We're going to give you a chance to get your strength back. Come on. Those online, make sure you sow tonight. God got you. You're texting the words NOCSC to 77977. You're giving on the app. You're giving on the website. Or if you're writing a check, you want to mail it. You mail it to 5517 South Michigan. You can even drop it off at the office. Or you can mail it in. Come on. I will wait. Everybody say Hey! Say, I will trust in you. The Lord is the my Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Hey! Those in the building, can you sing this to the Lord? The Lord. The Lord is my light. Hey! Who shall I be afraid? I will trust in you. Give Marcus a little camera time. He home. With all of my heart, I will. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You've never let me down. So I'll trust in you. I will trust. Let's go from the top again. The Lord is my light. Take us on out, if you don't mind, online. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. There's a blessing in the way, there's a blessing in the way, yeah. I will wait for you. I will still trust, will in, trust you. in you. Come on, if you're in the building, lift your hands and say that to the Lord. 